everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Nico. Hello. Hello, Christian. Thank you for having me. It's great to have. It's always, I it was, we were just chatting about it. It's always exciting to talk to people that are in the, like the same space that have the SharePoint background. And so you've been doing it for, for a long time and finally got your MVP. So congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to, to be an MVP, freshly new. Well, for folks that don't know you, uh, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Okay, uh, so I'm Nico de Clare. Um, I'm a Belgian N365 developer um, who mainly started um, in SharePoint, uh, SharePoint on-prem, developing in SharePoint. But then I evolved more into an N365 developer, uh, mainly uh, everything online. Um, and since a couple of months, I started as a managing partner. That means that I manage a company together with my partner in crime, Class Lowers. Um, and uh, we are managing a freshly new company who we started from uh, Nust, uh, it's a Belgian company. And together with another Belgian company, Robust, we are doing a joint uh, venture about a new uh, company that's just starting now. And we do everything about M365 from Power Platform to governance uh, and even Copilot now because that's very hot right now. Because everybody's asking about Copilot right now. Well, that, hey, look, that's a big deal. Have, having started a couple companies, I mean, one, you know, the great timing to become an MVP because it certainly is a huge marketing and and uh, you know, a networking you know, boon to any new company, any, any company. Um, definitely, definitely. It, it's sometimes frustrating with an existing and older company where they like they don't understand the the value of having an MVP on board and they kind of push back like hey you're spending all this time doing community stuff instead mm -hmm. of doing things for us and they don't recognize that there's tremendous value in being part of this community so anyway congratulations thank you thank you very much but speaking about networking um when i started my my journey in um, in um, the the how do you say the um the community mm -hmm. then then you notice that your networking is growing little by little because you get to know so many people who you work with at the open source uh, uh, open source project or when you go to to events and stuff so networking is always important yeah you never I, well I, so i've i've long been a, a networking guy like networking like actual social networking technology been involved <laughs> since the late 90s uh, and my, my philosophy is that, uh, especially like via LinkedIn, if there's anybody that has relevant within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, I'm, I'm hundred percent happy to connect with those folks. Anybody else that comes in with questionable, they're either selling some product or service. They're not clear of what they, they are, their profile, unless there's a story that goes along with that. Like people will reach out and be like, Hey, I'd love to connect. I saw you speak. I read this article. There's something to connect us, like happy to connect with those people. Or you say they just in the profile says I'm an MVP or I'm a SharePoint analyst or a developer in, you know, in this space, happy to connect with those people when it's ambiguous. I'm a bit wary of those folks. Definitely. I can only say that it's very important networking. Definitely. Well, so what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, so you've been doing, you've been working in this space for a long time. And so when did you start uh, pursuing this or was this something that just kind of came about organically? Well, I've always been very um, eager to to share my, my, my knowledge with others. Um, but I, I was always searching, how can I do that? I, I always had something like, yeah, um, I like to share my knowledge, but blogging, I don't know if, if that's interested all other people. Uh, but a couple of years ago, I spoke to uh, Elius Drive uh, from Belgium also, um, who is uh, a very famous person, a uh, very famous MVP. And he said, I started blogging once uh, just to archive everything to myself. And I was like, yeah, that's a very good point of yep. view. I will use it and I will also start to blog. 
And at the same event uh, where I spoke earlier, I spoke to um, maintainers of the CLI for Microsoft 365. It's an open source CLI tool from PMP. Um, and they told about the CLI for Microsoft. And I said, okay, that's cool. Um, so I, I took a look at I took a look at their um at their repository at, at GitHub. And I was like, okay, that's very cool. I want to to make contributions to this uh, open source project. And so I started just contributing and I enjoyed every every moment, every contribution I enjoyed very much. And I learned also a lot of new things like, for example, unit testing. Um, I know that it existed, but didn't use it very much. But then um, at the CLI for Microsoft 365, it's, it's something that's really necessary you have to write your unit tests so i had to learn such such thing uh, so how so as far as getting into the program itself did uh, did you have somebody at microsoft submit your name was it a fellow mvp or it was a fellow mvp like it was adam wojcik uh, who came to me and he, he was like you know i think you would, would be a great mvp uh, and are you uh, okay for me to um, to help you to uh, to become an MVP and to guide you into the process. And I was like, okay, yeah, certainly. Very and, much. And now you're drinking from the fire hose. You're starting to get all of the invitations to all of the dozens of calls per week that you yeah. can. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> that you, yeah. You need choose. to pick and choose. <laughs> Definitely. All those emails, I get them now. <laughs> but that's you're, great. Also gonna, you're, you're also going to start getting you know, people coming to you that you know in your network and say like, you know, how did, how did you do that? Oh, how can I, you know, follow that same process? Yeah, you know, have you Definitely. have you already started to give guidance to people? Have they, have they started to reach out to you? Definitely. Um, it was uh, the day after I got nominated as an MVP. There was something who came to me like, you know. I know something who is who wants to be and become an MVP. Can you nominate him? And I was like, okay, let's let's take a look at his contributions and stuff. And then, yeah, definitely, I uh, when I can guide someone, I I really love that. When I when I can help them, that's that's always been my passion to to help other people to to uh, to to uh, mentor them uh, uh, and yeah. I remember when I was at, at uh, previous companies, I always liked to share my knowledge into a really like Teams blog post, for instance. So I really love to help people to to uh, share my knowledge and stuff. Well, there's uh, certainly you know, going to be even more opportunities coming through as a, as a member of the the, the program. Um, what what are the topics? What are the things that you're talking about, writing about, like? you know sharing now like what are your like what are you passionate about in the technology sphere well definitely spfx um, i'm really passionate about spfx when i have to choose something that i have to do on a daily basis then spfx is definitely something that i, that I like doing uh, so writing web parts extensions uh, in sharepoint in teams uh, etc um, next to that um, i'm also very passionate about uh, oauth uh, 2.0 uh, where, where I wrote a couple of blog posts who had uh, quite success, I must say. Um, so I really like to to share uh, my knowledge about that stuff. Um, but yeah, besides that, just overall entry 65 de development from the Teams toolkit to, uh, to TypeScript, uh, yeah, name it. Just in general, the development in entry 65. And what what is the uh, what's the status of like the community in your area? So I know a lot of a lot of regions are kind of struggling with user groups and and smaller events. You know the, the community based events um, post pandemic, trying to build things back up again. What's kind of the state of things in your region? Well, I think it's it's building up again. Uh, you had something like SharePoint Saturday, who was mm -hmm. uh, which which was really famous. Then it, it became uh, Collab Days Belgium, mm -hmm. um, and you noticed uh, in in uh, the pandemic uh, during Corona that it declined uh, a little bit. But step by step, after that, it, it's going again. So yeah, uh, definitely, uh, it's it's going the good track. Yeah, know that the so I've actually uh, I was able to present at a couple of the SharePoint Saturday um, Belgium events so back in the early 2010s and 
Um, I'm sure I have out on like Facebook or something photos I go dig up and see who's it's always interesting to look and see who's in the crowd there. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good to see events that are starting to, to, uh, you know, come back together. And some of the larger events are reporting numbers, you know, greater than just before pandemic. So yeah, you know, I think there's definitely a hunger for people to get back together and face to face. Yeah. Do definitely. things. It was at uh, Collab Days a couple of years ago where I spoke Elio and, and the maintainers of the CLI from Microsoft. So it all started started there. And uh, last year, um, it was uh, at Collab Days Belgium where I had the chance to spoke to speak at uh, for the very first time um, for a big audience, I must say. Um, and now I, I get a chance to uh, speak at... Uh, uh, collab summits, uh, European collab summits uh, yep. at Wiesbaden, uh, which is a pretty bigger event uh, with three thousand five hundred attendees. Yep. So I'm doing the. Uh, I'm speaking at the uh, American version, the North American Collab Summit NAX in cool. Dallas in April. Um, cool. Not quite as big. You know, just moved it from uh, Central U.S. out in the Ozarks to uh, to Dallas, so the numbers should jump up a bit. But it's the a lot of the same people. It's you know, Audis and kind of that crowd that put together that you know the ECS event are all coming over and and uh, uh, helping uh, put together and speak at and help put together this event in Dallas. So, yeah, for folks that aren't familiar too, we were just talking about formerly known as SharePoint Saturday, now the CommunityDays.org, which is Microsoft sponsored. There are other re resources like I just mentioned, Otis, uh, and there's a bunch of the community, especially in Europe, that um, that support the Collab Days platform. We're actually doing our event in April for Collab Days Utah, so we're using that platform that Otis and team built up. I just I keep like mention Otis's name. There's a lot of people involved, but for uh, yeah, <laughs> it's really great. But there's yeah. also um, the AMS events, which are the, uh, what is it? The, um, it, it's all the, what does AMS stand for? It's, it's the, it, it, anyway, it's another, they, they do events all around Asia Pacific as well as Europe, um, led by Patrick out of uh, France. Um, but yeah, there are opportunities if you're interested in speaking. Um, there are so many opportunities out there, just have to look around at the various calendars, but the communitydays.org calendar that Microsoft maintains tries to look at all of those events from those. Those are like really the three major community led, you know, mm -hmm. event brands, community days, collab days, and the AMS. Yeah, that's so. true. But, um, my, when I try to to do my my um, sharing of knowledge, I I try to do it uh, a little bit everything, um, and I try to do it step by step. So first, I started with uh, with open source open source projects uh, with with blogging, um, then I started with uh, community calls presenting um, community calls, and now I started with with speaking. So I try to do a little bit a mix everything. of each. Yes. What 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 would you say your primary contribution type is? Are you more of a of a blogger? Uh, no, open source projects. Okay. Yeah. Um. I I enjoy that uh, that much that I uh, did a pretty number of contributions uh, at at one year, um, and I guess I gave the maintainers uh, sometimes a very hard time because they always had to uh, review the contributions I did and. At times, I guess it was uh, pretty, pretty much. So uh, that's my main focus, open source projects, definitely. I, I always like to, to ask that question just because some people say like, I'm you know deathly afraid of presenting. It's like, you, you don't have to present. There are so many other ways. I mean, as you say, just get involved in the open source and the community, the, the patterns and practices calls and various initiatives. You can jump yeah. on become part of a, a, you know, a, a panel that, that works on some of these things and makes contributions that way. You can go in and answer questions in, uh, yeah, in various forums. I mean, there's a lot of ways to get involved and give back to the community. Definitely. But I'm, I was also, I, I'm also a bit afraid of presenting for a big crowd. You know, I, I'm also nervous when it started, but 
once it's over, I'm so glad that I did it. And that's really a great feeling to, to know. I, I, I shared my knowledge and I, I spoke to, uh, to a big crowd and um, I uh, conquered my fear. That's a really great feeling. So definitely uh, should try it out. The vast majority of people share that fear. Yeah, <laughs> it's understandable. But again, it's but you're right. Then there's a lot of ways that you can get involved, in, especially if you're involved in your user group. You don't have to give a big grand, you know, a 60 minute presentation. You can get in and most user groups like we do it. I know a lot of user groups do this where we open up at the beginning of, of our sessions before our primary speaker comes in. We give people a chance to spend five, 10 minutes and share something that they've built, something that they're working on, a problem they've they've tried to resolve. And they can share that, present that, um, or <laughs> or just talk about it. And that's a great kind of, you know, dip your toes in the pool into public speaking. Definitely. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, I spoke to Louise Fries, who is an MVP uh -huh. for many years. She did a lot of presentations. Um, and I asked her, how do you cope with the fear of presenting? And she said, she said it's very beautiful. She, she said, like, uh, you can embrace the fear. Just embrace it, the, the, ex the excitement. And I think that's a very good point of view. Well, Just there's embrace. something to be said is like when, when you know the subject matter, when you can speak to it, when you're very comfortable with that, like you went and you built something, it, uh, a big piece of advice I give is like, be honest about what you know and you don't know. Somebody <laughs> says, well, did you try this? Be like, don't try to patch it over like that. Like, oh, I should have known that. You just say, you know, no, I, I didn't think of that. You're right. I need to go back and, and look at that. And people are much more accepting when you have some humility, you know, like you don't know all of the answers. Like, here's what I tried. Here's what I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, use it as a learning opportunity for yourself as well. But no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, if, if you go in and uh, again are confident that you are, you know, you know a lot about the topic, you can talk talk to that. It, it's really easy to, then to fill that time and to have a good experience. Definitely, and I think there is nobody who can always know everything. Right, there's always something new new to learn. I used to joke that uh, I said there's nobody that knows everything about SharePoint. I said, well, there's. There's actually, I would, I, there's two or three people who I think do know absolutely everything. In fact, there's a, I won't name him. He gets embarrassed, but uh, there's one MVP uh, in the Pacific Northwest that I used to always say that like when, when the SharePoint engineering team at Microsoft has questions about SharePoint, they reach out to this MVP. And it was mostly true. He did a lot of consulting with Microsoft, um, but, but you're right. Nobody knows everything. There's a, every MVP that I know has said, you know, I don't know at some point. So yeah, yeah. Again, nothing to be embarrassed about there. Well, Nico really appreciate your, your time today. I always like to, of course, I'll have all of the, your, I'll have your MVP profile and your social profiles that are out there. If people want to reach out and connect with you, where are you most active in social? Where's the best place to find you? Uh, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Yep. The mainstays, the staples the of, of the social. Mainstays. Excellent. Yes. We'll make sure we'll get that out there. We've got your uh, GitHub link and what's the other one on your Microsoft profile. Is that your, Oh, it's the, actually it's your website as well. So we'll have all of those linked off to the blog. You'll be able to find those out on buckthaplanet.com. And of course, through the podcast and through the YouTube profile, Nico, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Christian.